day I had the privilege of going to a funeral uh, in South Carolina for our missionary Jimmy Rose. You heard that he had passed away. And uh, two hour funeral by the way. And uh, they had plenty to say talking about him. And uh, there was there was about 50 Brazilians that he had led to Christ and had uh, discipled. Some of them were pastors, pastor's wives, and missionaries that got up and sang in Portuguese. And so it, it just reminded me, I know a lot of times, um, a lot of times missionaries are a picture on the wall or a letter in our email, but uh, it is a real deal. And, uh, and so uh, thank you for supporting missions. Thank you for sending the light. And uh, the folks that were there, there was two gentlemen that got up. One, uh, there are two preacher boys. One was his son-in-law, and another is a missionary, church planning missionary that we support that's going to be here in just a, little, in, in a few days. And uh, they gave testimony. The one that we're going to have here got saved when he was 12 years old. Uh, as I understood it, his mom wasn't at home, and so they kind of took him under their wings, and uh, he's now uh, planting churches. And so it's a real deal, and it means, and I know, again, I know we come here, and sometimes it just, it seems, I know that nobody does this on purpose, but sometimes it's like, oh, hum, does it really happen? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And so I wanted to encourage you with that, and that's enough. I'll hush, Brother Mark. It's all you. All me. All right. Thank you. Uh, Psalms 141 is our verse of the day. And I'm going to dial it way down today. So this is going to be a nice, easy, little, cute verse that has no controversy and stuff associated with it, unlike last week. So let me catch you guys up on some oops, some uh, things on our prayer list. While we are turning to Psalms 141. <clears throat> Um, Larry Gallion has Diana on there with an eye infection, so let's remember her. Bonnie Anderson has Lynn. Lynn is having a hard time getting off of prednisone. Uh, what, do, do, does everybody know what a brown recluse is? I got bitten by a brown recluse one time, and um, I had to go on prednisone, and it was one of those where you take, like, I'm just making these numbers up. I, I think you take like 10 the first day and 8 the second day and 6, and you kind of step it down. Well, after about the third day, everything was looking good and, and all, and I felt pretty good. And uh, so I just completely quit it. And, man, that was the wrong thing to do. So, <clears throat> but, but, it, but let's remember Lynn. He's, he's having a hard time getting. He don't need to do what I did, that's for sure. Um, uh, Karen's uh, friend Phyllis has is ongoing recovery. She's been at uh, MD Anderson in Texas, and so she is back here now, but is still recovering. Doug Deacons has uh, Andy Ray pray that her body doesn't reject a bone marrow transplant. So, Doug, when is that coming up? Oh, she had it already. Okay, all right. So let's remember uh, Andy Ray that for, with this bone marrow transplant. And let's see, Michael Blevins needs prayer for leg, okay, and okay, all right. Better on his heart, okay, all right, all right, so we'll remember him. All right, well, Psalms, um, <clears throat> Psalms one, oh, I'm sorry, one more announcement, uh, Rhonda Duncan asked that if, if you want to get a, a, a card, like if you're, um, you know, you're sick or in the hospital or something like that, she needs your address. So um, we have the, the best way to do that is to go to the church app and make sure that you have your information in there. Does everybody know how to get into the church app? Um, if you don't, it's, it's not too difficult, but just make sure your information is in there and it's current. Otherwise... You can't be contacted when you're, when you're sick or when you need a, a visit or a card. All right, uh, well, so Psalms 141. Uh, a couple of nights ago, I was in a deep sleep about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I, and I heard a, a thump and uh, kind of woke up. And, and I have to tell you, before, before that happened, 
in, in the in the children's church hour, which which occurs right after this class, uh, I have several series going on with those kids, and one of them is uh, we've been talking about drunkenness, and we've been looking at people in the Bible who were thought to be drunk, but they weren't. And there's four of them that I've found so far. So anyway, I'd been studying that the night before, and so I don't know, it's maybe kind of on my mind. And so at three o'clock in the morning, I hear a thump. I mean, a pretty loud. It was it was enough to, to wake me up. And, and I keep a room real dark. I don't like a lot of light in there. So I woke up, and my wife's side of the bed was empty. But I knew I'd heard something. And then from over on the other side of of her bed where I couldn't see, I hear this maniacal laughter. <laughs> and I listened for a minute, and I'm still halfway between wake and sleep, so this is my story, and I'm sticking to it. And between laughter, I finally heard her say, I fell out of bed. <laughs> and I said, are you drunk? <laughs> And now my wife doesn't even drink, uh, except, you know, Baptist liquor, Nyquil, you know, that one's okay. But other than that, she doesn't even drink. But, man, I said, are you drunk? Psalms 141, verse 3, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Man, how many times have we said something and thought, oh, man, I wish... That one hadn't come out. I was on a WebEx earlier this week. You know where everybody's in your little square? And somebody let a, a four-letter word slip and went, oops, didn't mean to say that. I'm taking that back. Uh, no, you're not. Everybody already heard it. <laughs> Once it leaves here, we can apologize for it. We can say we're sorry. We can come up with a cover-up plan. We can do some damage control. But once it leaves here, it's out there. There is no taking it back. Once somebody has heard it, there's just cleanup. There is no taking it back. Set a watch, a guard, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep, garrison about the door of my lips. Hmm. Pretty good verse, huh? That's our verse of the day, Psalm 141, verse 3. See, I told you that one would be easy, non-controversial. Y'all like that one. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then, Brother Dan, you're on. Father, thank you, Lord, for our time we can be here together this morning. And thank you for the beautiful day that you gave us. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you that we can meet together, we can read and study your word, we can laugh together, we can pray together, we can fellowship, we can edify each other. And I'm, I'm with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I thank you for the encouragement it gives me just to be around my fellow believers. And thank you for your, your blessings. Thank you for putting us all together here, Lord. And I pray your blessing on our class today. Bless Brother Dan as he opens up the Word of God. As we read it, we study it together. And give us something that we can use this week. Maybe something that we did not know before. Maybe take something that we knew and, and strengthen that in our lives and shore it up and encourage us and edify us. And there could be someone here who's, who's down. Maybe someone here who is discouraged, someone who's in depression. Lift that person up, lift that one up. There could be somebody here who has a heavy heart. Maybe some things going on in their life, maybe in the life of a family member. There, there, there could be some illnesses. There could be, man, all kinds of things. There could be financial problems. If there's someone like that here, lift that one up. It's possible there's someone here who has never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. The Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, said Jesus came to die on the cross for our sins, according to the Scriptures, was buried and raised again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And that's the Gospel. So may the Gospel go out clearly this morning to, the, to that one who may need it. And Lord, we have several on our, our list with... Um, with physical ailments, we've, we've read those off. We bring those and, and others before you, Lord. Asking you to help not only the person who's got the, the uh, illness going on, but also their families. And, and I know how this can be a burden sometimes on the families. But, Lord, you are enough. You can handle it. You, you parted the Red Sea for Moses. You brought manna down for 40 years and fed millions of people. You opened the eyes of the blind. <laughs> You did all these mighty things, and Lord, you can handle these needs that we bring before you. So thank you again for our time together. Bless Brother Dan. 
as we move on with the next part of our class. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark. I'll use, I'll use this. That other one doesn't have a clip this morning, but that's not surprising. There's a lot of things this morning that are exciting. And um, how many woke up this morning and um, all of us, all of us that are here? I hope so. <clears throat> if not, we got some work to do, don't we? <laughs> and you looked out the window. Carmen and I, we have, we have a, a routine we didn't start out doing this, but we have a routine, and it's, it's become a routine, and it's, it's around coffee, all right? So we get up, and I go, usually I go and get the coffee. This morning, she beat me to it, and um, she made the coffee. We come out, we make our coffee, and there's usually no conversation at that point because that's not good at that level, at that point in the morning, Um <laughs> It's a Sunday morning. We've got to remember that. And the devil is looking for every opportunity that he can to pit one against the other um, to get you in a foul mood before you come to church. And so it's an unspoken rule. We just don't say anything. And, you know, we just, she did this, like that. She nodded. Or, or it'll be, you know, what's up, you know. And then we move on past. We, we grab our coffee. And, and then we go sit down. And then you just kind of let it sink in. Yes, I have to wake up, right? And I looked out the window, and it, it was dead. It just, how many, how many noticed that? It just seemed like everything was dead today. It was just quiet. Nothing was moving. No leaves were stirring. There was no traffic. And uh, it's like, wow, it's one of those days. And then I come in here, and I sense, I sense that others have picked up on the same thing. It's like one of those days, it's hazy, and it's cloudy, and we don't realize it, but it affects our mood. And you say, well, Brother Dan, how do you get over that? You don't. You just plow through it. <laughs> you just wade through it. It's like sludge. You just wade through it, and you move on. And without realizing it, you, 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 you overcome it. Now, just notice this. This is normal. It's normal to feel that way. It's normal to, you say, well, I already know this. Maybe somebody needs encouraging this morning because sometimes you come into a class like this and there are some happy, shiny people that come in and they're, they're that way all the time. And they make me sick because they, 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 they come in, hey, ah, you know, and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. That's not where I'm at. And I don't plan on getting there anytime soon. I don't care how smiley you are, you know. Sometimes you feel that way. Now, I'm just being transparent. Sometimes I feel that way. It's okay to feel that way. And uh, remember, happiness is temporary. Joy is of the Lord, and it, it is eternal. You can have joy in your heart and not be doing that, you know. It's okay. Now, we need to get over it eventually. I mean, you don't want to live there. You don't want to stay there. So um, just, just know that that's normal. Now, also, I, I need to share this. Sometimes that funk sometimes can be oppression. And we're talking spiritual, spiritual things here. And what I'm doing right now, I'm doing on purpose, specifically this morning, and I'm saying this out loud on purpose, spiritually, because I want, the, I want, to, I want to expose Satan. I want to expose him right now. Sometimes it's oppression. Now, to a child of God, you have Christ in your heart. Satan and God don't share rent. They don't, they don't, they don't abide. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. All things have become new. Uh, you are a new creature in Christ. He can no longer affect that part. You're not going to lose it. According to Scripture, you're not going to lose it. But he can oppress you. There can be oppression. And sometimes when you sense something like that, it's a spiritual thing. And just know, it's like, it's like another conscience. Or another, uh, yeah, it's like another conscience. And you just, you, you, you sense something is not right. Sometimes it's spiritual. All the more reason for us to lift our head, to pray, and to walk on. And walk on. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm not scared of him. 
uh, he, he's a pest. He's a pain in my side. But I'm not scared of him. And he will try. He's done it with you. He'll do it with me. And today, he's not going to win. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. We're talking about the Bible, and, I'm, and, and, and today we will finish up on that, the Word of God. And what we're doing is we're, just, we're, we're, we're going back to the basics, and we're kind of refreshing ourselves on what the Word of God is. And again, we're not going in depth. There's so much the Word of God is, is inexhaustible. And, but we're just kind of skipping a rock across the pond, and uh, we're touching some, some things about the Word of God. And we, we're looking at, and we have the last few weeks, looked at what is the role of the Bible in my life. What place does it have? What does it do for me, through me, um, with me? And, and we, we, we noticed that, uh, and we talked about it, that the Scriptures are unique in, in, in its production, its preservation, its proclamation, and, um, and so, and its purpose. We, we looked at the importance of the Bible in the believer's uh, life, how that there were some things that it does for the believer. We looked at that just in Psalm one, uh, 119, and how that in, in, in Psalm 119 with 176 verses, all but three speak of the Word of God and what they do and how they operate in our life. And then we started last weekend just a little snippet of something that I'd like to finish today, and then we'll move on next week to another lesson. But uh, basic principles of Bible study. And we looked at number one, Romans 8.8 8 says, so, they, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. What does that mean? Well, when you get saved, the Bible says, Behold, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature, old things passed away. From that point on, everything has become new, but you still have this, this, uh, this shell, the, 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 I, I call it a concha, I call it, uh, it it's, it's, it's the, the, the body that you dwell in while on this earth. You still have that to contend with, okay? New nature but you're still dealing with that flesh. The, the Bible also talks about the flesh warreth against the spirit. And the term war is a serious term. It's not playing footsies. It's literally you are, you are battling your flesh. And here in verse 8, it says, So then they that are in the flesh, you cannot please God. Okay? If, if, if you're operating, if you're walking, that's why the Bible says, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's one or the other. Oil and water, they don't mix. If you're doing the one, the other one is not happening. If you're doing the flesh, the spiritual is not happening. Okay? That's why it says that if you're walking in the flesh... Now, what does it mean to walk in the flesh? To walk in the flesh is to give in to what you want 100%. God is not involved in any of it. God says, I need you to do this, and you say, well, maybe. Maybe later. And you proceed to do it your way. That is in the flesh. That's not in the Spirit. And the Spirit is in you. That Another reason why, and I'm just putting verses and throwing verses out there and bringing them together. The Bible says, quench not. That's like to suppress or to take the Spirit and move Him to the corner. He's there. He's with you. He never leaves you. But when we quench Him is when we say, I'm going to do what I want to do. That's flesh. That's flesh, okay? You say, well, Brother Dan, how do I live a daily life and not walk in the flesh? It's simple. Proverbs 3, in all thy ways acknowledge Him. Just act like He's part of you. He is. Just acknowledge the fact that He's there. Make His presence known that He's there. If you do that, you'll walk less in the Spirit and more, I mean, less in the flesh and more in the Spirit. Okay? And the Word of God helps us do that. So, effective Bible study depends upon a correct heart 
attitude. We saw that as number one. I'm going to give you several things, so that's number one on the list. Effective Bible study will depend upon a correct heart attitude. If you're reading your Bible in the flesh, you're not going to get much out of it. Okay? If a minister, is a, a preacher, is, is studying the Bible in the flesh, guess what kind of messages he's going to preach? You know? He's going to think... He's going to think of a conversation that he had that week with someone. And he's going to say, bye, cracky, we, we, you know, I'm, 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 just, I'm just going to do it. And he's going to get up there and do it. All right? That's in the flesh. And he would be, at that point, operating within his own strength. God doesn't join him in that venture. And we've seen that. We, we, we've, we've, we've seen some of those messages. Sometimes we've been the brunt of some of that. And we're like, oh, my soul. And let's be honest, it's okay. We're like, oh my word. Now, you say, are you talking about the man of God? No, I'm not. I'm talking about living in the flesh or, or walking in the spirit. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not pointing, I'm not singling anything out. But I am saying it happens to anyone. It happens to anyone. As a husband, I can respond in the flesh. Or I can ask God to help me respond. And that goes a lot better. And sometimes the response means hush. It takes two to have a fight, does it not? If you've got one that removes themselves from, that, from that, 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 that squabble, then there's no fight. Somebody's just going to be doing this. So, the, you know, this happens to be part of my daily life. And the Word of God is something that as we approach it and we study it, we can't, we can't say, I think this, so now I'm going to find something to back me up. I'm going to throw the book at him. I'm going to throw the book at him. And we will find a verse. Guaranteed, you're going to find a verse that matches how you feel. And then you're going to let him have it. Never mind the context of what it's talking about. You're just going to pull that verse out and say, yep, there it is. Right there. See what God said? Throw that in her face. See how that goes. Effective Bible study then depends upon a correct heart attitude. That's why when we go to study the Word of God, we must enter into that with, a good, with a, just a good attitude. You, uh, and, and not just a, a, a good heart attitude. Lord, what do you have for me today? What do you want me to, to, to learn today? Number two, all Scripture is to be understood within its proper context. All Scripture needs to be understood within its proper context. I get questions every week. I'm discipling several folks. I get questions every week. Brother Dan, um, what do you think about this? I mean, I, I know you're probably going to say something, but he said, he, he'll say, okay, so... So the Bible says this, does it mean this? I said, all right, just, just a moment. Let's pause. And I don't know everything. I know you, that surprises you guys, but I do not know everything, but I know where to go to find the answer. And if I don't know it right away, I know that if I can just go to the Word of God, and what I'll do is and, and I'll look and see the, all the scriptures surrounding that verse before I even look at that verse. So I can get a general idea of what's going on in this passage. That would be like you as a, 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 in a business and you have employees under you and somebody said, he did this. And you're like, but what did you do that for? You don't do that because if you do that, you're going to get yourself into a mess. You want to find out what's going on behind everything that's behind this because somebody just doesn't wake up one day and say, I hate you, and I'm going to do something mean to you. There's something behind it. And so you investigate, and you ask, and you look, and you search, and, and you find out. Do You find out the context. We do the same with the Word of God, and it needs to be understood within its context. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's look at that verse real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9.
The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 13, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by what? By his Spirit. He's not going to reveal it to you if you're walking in the flesh. It's when you're walking in the Spirit that that will be revealed to you. For the Spirit, what does it do? It searcheth all things. Yea, or that means even the deep things of God. Even the deep things of God. The things that are a little bit more difficult to wrap our brains around. The, the, the Bible says that the Spirit, does, it searches all that. For what man knoweth, the th- for, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but what? But the spirit of God. So you have the spirit. That's how you can know things of God. That's why you see some things clearly. And when you don't, then, then the Spirit will search it out for you within you. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. It's not a mystery. It's not a mystery. The things of God are not a mystery. The will of God is not a mystery. How you are to walk and talk and, and act and and. and the, the deep questions that you have about life, those are not mysteries. God has given you the greatest tool in, in, in all of, of, of humanity, in all of the world, in all of, of, of our existence, and that is he has placed himself in you by way of the third part of the Trinity, the divine Trinity, the Holy Spirit of God. He's in you. He's all you need. Amen. He's all you need. And he's given it to you freely, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. A lot of times, the word of God doesn't make sense to your average guy out there that's, that, that does not know Christ. It's foolishness. The Bible says his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things which, with spiritual. See, a lot of times we get caught into the human part of who we are, and when we get saved, we take all the information and all of our experiences in life and everything that's been taught and all the philosophy that we have picked up on along the way, whether it be from parents or in school or with friends or at work, all these philosophies, if you think about it, there is an enormous amount of information and philosophy that enters into our brain and into our heart in a lifetime. I mean, how many times uh, have you been at work and they have a, a, a workshop? And, and how much philosophy is part of that workshop? And that philosophy may work well in the workplace for somebody that does not know Christ as their personal Savior, but for a believer, it goes totally against the Word of God. I remember I was, at, I was working at Oral-B in Iowa City. Yes, the toothbrush factory. And uh, that was the f- most fun job I've ever had. And... Uh, and it, even though it was third shift, I was driving 100 miles a day to go do it. It was fun. And um, I, 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 I was part of a committee, and um, in this committee, we had to take us this test, and we had to watch these videos. You guys are very familiar with You watch the videos, and then you sit and you take the test, and I thought, I've got this. I've got this because of my upbringing because of morality and all this other stuff. I'm like, it had to do with inter-office or inter-work relationships. And I'm like, this should not be a problem. Yeah, right. I bombed it. I mean, I totally bombed the test. And it was because I was looking at things from a total different perspective than, than, than what the folks at this seminar 
we're looking at it. And it had to do with situations. I was answering situations. What would you do in this scenario? What would you do in this scenario? I was picking answers that lined up with the Word of God. And that does not, it's not the same. It's just not the same. And so we have, to, we have to be careful with that. All Scripture is to be understood within its proper context. We bring stuff to the table that we have to be careful of because we have these thoughts and these experiences and everything, and then we try to approach spirituality. We try to ap- approach spiritual matters with that same information, and it's not going to fly. It's not going to work. We have to go to the Word of God with a, with, a, with a clear mind and a clear heart and say, Lord, how do I handle this? How do I handle this in a proper manner? Number next, all Scripture is to be rightly, rightly divided. And that kind of goes along with within its proper context. When we look at 2 Timothy we look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. You know the verse well. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but then rightly dividing the word of, of truth. To rightly divide the word of truth. Now, you don't have to be scared of that. But you just, you, just need to, you just need to pray about it, and with the Holy Spirit's help, you start studying scriptures, and then you bounce it off. So, 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 you know, and we'll get into this in, in just a little bit, but you bounce it off other, other uh, verses or other scripture because the Bible will never contradict itself. If I'm reading a verse and I'm understanding a verse that apparently looks like it's contradictory, it's because I'm not understanding it correctly. And so I have to go back and rethink it. Perfect example. Genesis chapter 2, I believe it's 16 and 17. The day ye shall eat of it, that day you're going to what? You're going to die. Chapter 3, and right around verse 6 or 7, it says, and they... They, uh, what's it say in English? Um, and they both discovered that they were naked, and then they made some clothes for themselves. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. God just got through saying that they're going to die. Why didn't they die? So then that sent you to, okay, well, maybe I didn't understand it right. And the proper understanding of that passage of Scripture is that they did die. The Bible talks about two deaths physical and spiritual. And that day, they died spiritually. How do I know that? Because in verse 25, it says they were both naked and they weren't ashamed. They didn't care. They didn't know any any better or any different. But then the moment they disobeyed, all of a sudden, that becomes an issue. Why? Something within them happened. They died spiritually. So it's just a matter of uh, looking at it and making sure it doesn't contradict other areas of Scripture. So it needs to be rightly divided. Number next, the individual words of Scripture are the key to correct understanding. Individual words of Scripture are the key to correct understanding. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5. I know that we're looking at several verses, but again... We're talking about the Word of God and about understanding the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5. The Bible says, every word of God is what? Is anybody here? All right. It's pure. What does that word pure mean? Somebody, somebody help me. What does pure mean? Undefiled. Undefiled okay. Clean, yes. Anything else? What's that? Whole, holy, holy, yes. So it's pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And then it says in verse 6, Add thou not unto his words. Wow. Lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Guaranteed, if it's you and God, God's going to win every time. He is perfect. 
There's no way that we can attain that perfection. So individual words are, very, are, are, are key to correct understanding. When you're reading through a verse, now, we do this in, in, uh, in, in, in the Baptist denomination very well. We, we throw verses out and we speed through them sometimes. Okay? And, and there's, there's been times that I've used a verse for years and paused later on and read it and like, whoa, how did I miss this? Because I was speeding through it. And I didn't pause to look at a word and what it means. Romans 8, 1, there is therefore, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation. You close that book and open it up 10 years later, what's it going to say? There is therefore now. There's a reason why God places one word in that verse and it means, and it's, it, it, and it's present, and it's always in the present. There's no condemnation ever for those that are in Christ Jesus. So individual words are the key to correct understanding. Number next, understanding the Bible is not a matter of private interpretation. When the Bible was, was fulfilled and accomplished and done, there was no need for new inspiration and interpretation. God took care of it and he gave it to us. It's complete. This doesn't contain the word of God. It is the word of God. Okay, so First Peter chapter, Second Peter, I'm sorry, chapter one and verse twenty. Second Peter chapter one and verse twenty, the Bible says this. Second Peter one twenty. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we don't take and say, this is, this is how I understand this. This is what it means to me. Because I feel good about it. No. It either says it or it doesn't. And, 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 and I can't look at a verse. Now you say, what about application? Application is a whole other thing. It can be applied to different situations. I get that. But when it comes to what the Bible means, when it says what it says, we don't have the liberty, we don't have that liberty to interpret it to mean whatever we want it to mean. That's not correct when you're looking at the Word of God. Okay? And the Bible says that. Wow, I must hasten. Here we go. Uh, the Bible must be understood then by the normal and literal meaning of the words in the context in which you read them. That's how, that's how it must be understood. In the normal and literal meaning of the words in the, in, in the context of which you, which you read them. Now, I've, I must hasten because I want to give you this point so that we can be done with this lesson. Uh, the Bible must be also understood in light of God's consistency. God is a certain way. We don't make him to be what we want him to be. He is who he is. He has been who he has been. He will always be who he is, he is and has been and will never change. It, he will never change. So how consistent God is is how our in interpretation of the Scripture ought to be as well. Romans 1 says, um, that the invisible things of God can be understood by seeing them illustrated in God's creation. Those things which we, you know, it, you, it's clearly seen by all. Um, never base a doctrine on a question or a rhetorical or hypothetical statement in Scripture. Don't, don't make a doctrine out of that. There's a reason that it was rhetorical. <laughs> that makes folks think. And usually it comes accompanied with the answer, but not always. Not always, okay? So, but don't make a doctrine out of it. Never base a doctrine on a single verse of Scripture. Don't, be, don't make a doctrine out of one verse. You'll go wrong most every time. You always must, it must be backed up by, by other verses in Scripture. And then I wanted to give this one to you. Understanding... Um, the scriptures comes in time 
through spiritual growth. Look at Hebrews chapter 5. Now, I know when we talk this, sometimes it, it almost sounds complicated. Oh, man, all that just to study the Word of God? Oh, my soul. Then, I, then I've lost starting out of the gate. I'm not, a, I'm not a studious type. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12 says this. Now, this is a little bit of a reprimand, okay? He says, of whom, or verse 12, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Do you see that word again? What does that mean? That means at one time, they, had a, they were mature. They understood, but they, 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 they stopped learning. But you have need that someone teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not and not of strong drink. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those. Now here's the key right here. Don't miss this. Even those who by reason of what? Of use. Have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. When you use it, you don't lose it. If you use it, you don't lose it. And you, you keep exercising yourself so that you can discern between good and evil. Many times we make decisions in our life, and it's not on good information because we have, we've slacked off a little bit in studying the Word of God. And, it, and it's not as much a part of our life as it once was. And when we do that, we have the tendency to make decisions that are not discerning. They're not spiritually discerning. So let's keep that in mind when we study the Word of God. Don't be afraid of it. Let's get back to it. Lord, thank you for your Word. Thank you for how extensive it is and how personal it is and how wonderful it is and how exact it is and how applicable it is to our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you very much. 